Hello, and welcome to the East Africa Business Podcast. I'm Sam Floyd, and I'm here on the continent to learn about the emerging business scene. I'll be interviewing startups, investors, and organizations who are all playing their part in helping the region develop and grow. And in doing this podcast, I'll be sharing with you the things that I learn along the way. Fashion is big business. On the catwalks of London, Paris, and New York, millions of pounds are spent promoting the best designers to set the trends throughout the wider textile industry, with each city's Fashion Week being the highlight of the year. Until a couple of years ago, Kampala, Uganda, had no such event. In this episode, I talked to Gloria about how and why she started Kampala Fashion Week and how she's preparing for her third edition, which starts on the 20th of October 2016. It's a great episode that covers a lot of the cultural and societal issues around fashion, as well as giving an overview of the creative industries as a whole. I hope you enjoy. Cool. So I'm here with Gloria in the HQ of Kampala Fashion Week. Gloria, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just to get us started, can you tell us uh, how you got into the position of setting up Kampala Fashion Week? Um, well, gosh, where, how did I even... I mean, it was an idea that uh, started from my, during my, my adolescence because um, I did know I wanted to go into fashion, but there was... Um, I am actually second-generation tailor, um, so that actually is also what was um, supportive of enough to kind of direct me into this uh, line of tailoring and creating garments. And from that, as much as I like making clothes, I always just was very fascinated with the aspect of like, then wh- how do you get your clothes out there? And why do you need these platforms? And how do you get to your customer? And I think that kind of interest followed me into university when I was studying fashion and marketing at American Intercontinental University in London. Um, and from there, I just kept doing London Fashion Week. I kind of, uh, one of my teachers for production was the head of London Fashion Week production. Um, so she kind of uh, would take uh, interns, volunteers. So for the four years of my uh, university experience, I kind of always followed London Fashion Week. Um, when I decided to, you know, start my own label, fast forward, when I decided to start my own label, uh, after I graduated, after, of course, doing also a, a, a placement at Oswald Boateng, um, my first fashion show was um, Africa Fashion Week in South Africa, Johannesburg. And I still, again, felt that very much interest that I kind of didn't, I wasn't with the designers. I stayed with a lot of the production and I kind of was watching. And so that just emphasized, I think, and um, c- continued my interest in the fact that when I was much younger, I wanted to do Kampala Fashion Week because we didn't have a platform like the fashion weeks I had seen abroad. Uh, We had other other various platforms, but not at that extent of how much you can see what New York, London, Paris fashion weeks do for designers. Um, But then at the same time, I wanted to turn it into the way that it can work for an African uh, country and an African brand, and also just in general, the continent, how we function in all these different uh, uh, countries. So... Yeah, that's kind of how it all kind of stemmed from and then evolved. And then by the time that I decided to to start, there was such an, uh, a, a development in Uganda that, um, you know, there were just all these opportunities and so that could see that having your own label and creating these platforms, there was an audience and a customer that we could reach. So, yeah, that's kind of, I think, what also motivated why I thought it was the right time to start this kind of a platform because the continent is growing and uh, we're, we as Africans are developing and we also need to have our own voices for uh, describing and uh, depicting what, what we make and what we are inspired by and just have the same kind of storyline like Europe and uh, the West have had. Yeah. yeah. Um, just so I can understand, when you say you were more interested in the production rather than the design, what do you mean by the production? Um, the production meaning like the lights, the setup, how every designer has like a specific look for their collections, why they have looks for their collections, how you could see the production team takes its time to know each designer and have this individual feel, the music, content, the lighting, just how, I guess, the other story tale to design because and why it's important. I mean, because I guess also some people are like, we're not interested to why you made the design. We just want to see if we like it or not or if it's uh, uh, usable for winter or summer or whatever. I think that's sometimes how clothes are seen. 
but I think I guess also the I saw beyond that because I just saw how these shows grasp people in and how they really do affect and push someone's brand identity so that I guess I was more interested in just the making of all that um, because as, as a creative I do understand how you get lost in just creating these pieces but at the end of the day how are you going to sell these pieces how how do you stay true to the artist is because it's such a beautiful process I, I go through it how do you do come to clothes but at the same time you have to be realistic of how do I translate all these thoughts I have so that it maybe does capture an audience and a consumer that will want my clothes which again then just benefit because that helps your brand grow so yeah how you balance that whole creative at the same time exposure marketing aspect of the whole yeah so that's the production side i guess it's the marketing side of design and so, and so for you is that a really is that important when it comes to setting up the fashion week here the production side of things um definitely i mean maybe because i'm also more of an artist i am very i it's important that i respect the creative process of the designers and i understand how it's important how to display your clothes so that's very important to me compared to i think sometimes people thinking oh you just have an event as long as there's a runway and models or whatever but i'm actually it's i want every detail to kind of incorporate being African, being Ugandan, um, maybe also being female, because I, I am female and I'm in charge. So I incorporate very feminine things at the same time, a feminine masculine, because I also think I'm a, I'm a various definition of a female. I don't think I'm the old school version of what females should be. I think I'm the females allowed to have my own story and define myself the way I choose to. So I, I incorporate that all also into why how Kampala Fashion Week runs, that it must have, like when our set designer to the music, we're very big on now bringing music that's done by African artists, wherever they are, uh, the ones doing well to the unknown. So that also is advertising them. I'm very into also my set design that I want them, because we're such a developing country, any opportunity to market anybody creates job opportunities. And especially when people are doing stuff of quality, you want to push them because sometimes uh, quality can be sidelined to um, names, positions, <laughs> you know, um, sometimes money, depending on what someone is about to bring to the table, rather than actually someone who is talented and gifted to do the work. Um, so uh, we try to highlight that in KFW. It's not just also about the clothes, because as much as I saw Europe, it's about the clothes. Uh, but there's all these other aspects to it, which is the set design, um, the lighting, etc. So I try to bring also attention to all the people who run those areas. Yeah. Yeah. And just so I can visualize it, um, how how long? I mean, is it a week? Does it take seven days? No, because we're not yet up to that <laughs> ability. Uh, we're still a very small team with a very uh, reserved budget, um, even though we have amazing sponsors that have definitely helped us push forward. Um, we've been able to just manage with that. So right now we're just, we've moved to two days. We were one day for the past two years. And now we are, well, technically we're three days because now we've kind of joined in with the U.S. Embassy and uh, that uh, and the seed show, uh, which work together to kind of promote. It's like a project runway. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, we've now partnered with them that every year we will be their finale of project project like like project runway, which opens New York Fashion Week. They will open Kampala Fashion Week. So I've kind and our production team in association with our uh, local production team, Silk Events, our international production team, LDJ Productions, are actually the production team for uh, Project Runway in New York and New York Fashion Week. So I was very fortunate to meet them and somehow also that kind of catapulted me being ready to do this because they, uh, the head of LDJ, Lori, was just, she heard my story, she heard what I wanted to do and she was like, will come and support because they were already interested in coming into Africa and kind of educating on fashion and the whole aspect of it. So, yeah, somehow that worked out. And now mm -hmm. that's our production team. Mm -hmm. And that's what's led to this three days because now it's the seed show finale and then two days worth of showcasing of designers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so how many designers are showcasing? Uh, per day, it's eight. Yes. Yeah. 
And so how does each one get sort of half an hour or how does... Well, it's kind of like uh, about, about 15 minutes each. We have a, we're still small, so we ask the designers that max is a 15-piece collection, minimum 10. Um, well, max can be 20, actually, and then minimum is 10. Um, so that usually gives each one around 10 minutes due to the runway size, uh, 15 minutes due to the runway size. So, yeah, it's about 15 minutes uh, per designer. Okay. And, um, and how, how do you find the designers? Um, see, that's another element of why KFW was important, because I think it also gives, since we are developing, it gives a platform for, we have a, a youth of new creatives coming up, you know, because, uh, you know, due to now, uh, peace and, and uh, economic growth. Uh, we want the, these youths are now at a place where the education on fashion and art can be given to them. And so we want to create a platform to show these youths the level of, of, of quality they must be automatically. Because sometimes it, it's very easy to make a business, but then half do it. And, and to succeed in the arts, it really is, you can't, it's one of the fields I always say, you can't cheat. You're either good or you're bad, you know. Um, but hey, you could still make a business even if you're bad. So we want to kind of push the, the designers that are pushing boundaries, not just as artists, but as designers, as Africans, as um, creatives. So we do look for quality, but yeah, we're, we're, which is like our standard. I think one thing even people are starting to know about KFW is that it's about quality because we believe that quality will help sustain your business and sustain you in the future. And so we also have messages behind what KFW does. We do seminars uh, once a month for five months building up to KFW where we have speakers. It's a free entrance. We, we, we encourage youth and everyone to come where you can get um, talks with people that are, are doing really, you know, um, great things in the creative arts. Like we've had um, architects. We're actually our new seminar coming up. We're going to have act architecture and activism. Prior to that, we just had PR and social media. Um, and before that, photography. So we also, every year, this is our third time around, we've been doing these seminars to kind of give education back so that it also helps um, on that side. So who is it that is attending these seminars? Um, we've had such a mix. It's really been interesting. Like you've seen an international foreign crowd to local, all mixed up to young to old. I think people are just um, excited because it is very rare to find workshops freely available with just people talking and allowing uh, Q&As and communication. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's just been such a, I think, a crowd from everywhere. I think people who've been in business for a while, but just needed an update of what's going on because, yeah, sometimes education in these fields are very hard to come by in a quality manner still, um, but we're hoping to change that also through KFW platform to encourage that this uh, the education for the arts is very important and needs to be updated and needs to be supported. So, yeah. So is it, um, so is it that the, the designers, are most of them, did they learn their design here in Uganda? Or did they? Um, it's, it's such a mix. There's the ones that are self-taught, um, like uh, Raz Kosozi, who is actually now the head of the Seed Show. He was self-taught, and then he worked with me, and then now he started his own label. So uh, myself, I've been taught, I'm second generation, so I kind of lived in my mom and my aunt's uh, factory before I then went to study. And then even when I studied, I didn't really need to do the courses of training of stitching because I'd already been taught young, so that I kind of was self-taught in that sense. But by professionals which were my my relatives um and then there are other people who go to school there are other people who've like changed the major so it's like such a a mix of things yeah you'll find uh different designers of all levels and we recommend that and we encourage it we don't say well you have to have to have a degree from here and here no it's about talent it's if it's nurtured if it's supported there's so much you can do i mean i am i feel like i am that also example because if my aunt and mom had nurtured me so young because they saw my interest instead of maybe being like, oh, no, this is not what you're supposed to do. This is what we're supposed to do, you know. But instead, we're like, OK, come work for us. Do these little patterns. Do this. Um, I Maybe that's that's I, I believe it's why I'm where I am at quite a, 
an early age, yeah, being pushed and being supported. So that's what we're trying to also do. And we rec- we open, we're open to all kinds of brands. Um, if you're a little tailor who says, oh, I only do five pieces a month, but you have that customer, come be on the runway. If it helps bring more customers to you because that's what you're needing it for, or if you just want to display so you can be proud of the pieces you're doing, we're open to whatever the designers are. It's just all we ask for is a certain level of quality, which and, is the uh, standard. And when you say quality, is it, uh, uh, is it like an objective measure of quality or is it um, we think this is, or is it subjective? Oh, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's it's very much, uh, I think, based on the, 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 the education statistics. Like we kind of follow the basic school rules of how you tailor. Uh-huh. It's like by the tailoring book. Okay. That's kind of what we're following, not, on, not our thoughts, because sometimes, you know, that someone has a style that's not yours, but it's beautifully done and you can see the move. And you, of course, you still have to have that person showcase. So, yeah, we're, it's basically just the standard of tailoring. Just out of interest, what are the, what are the, what are the main things that you look for? Okay, uh, straight lines. <laughs> straight lines, uh, per, like aver- uh, average size fit, um, a consistency, because uh, you could show me one piece and then, then I see all the other five and it's just this one piece, so it means you paid attention to that, but you didn't pay attention. So consistency, straight lines, quality of fabrics, um, yeah, and the fit. Those are the basic standards for tailoring, yeah. And I was interested, you said before that you've um, sort of customized the week to be more, have more of an African focus or a Ugandan focus? Uh, yes, I've customized it in a, in a business sense of what works being in Africa and in an African community and an African co- economy. Can, can, can you tell me a bit about how you've done that? Um, I mean, I think maybe the start was kind of not having a week, where I think lots of week, many weeks have began, it's a week. <laughs> where for us, it's like, no, that's not the case. Uh, we need to build interest. So by starting small and getting that interest, we grow by the interest because that's usually how the um, Ugandan consuming market is. You know, they first have to know you, they have to first choose if they like you, and then you have to bring them in. So we follow that kind of frame of why how we are running. Um, at the same time, again, incorporating a lot of times somebody would hire people from all over the place to to run something because you're like, oh, well, they're more qualified. Where I believe that when I see talent that it can grow so we work on also what's possible like uh so if we're like okay we have ideas that we want to turn this into this and this but the the materials aren't available we're like so how do we work with what's available so yeah Yeah. that's kind of the mentality we run which is yeah so do you have an example of when you've done that Uh, let's see gosh i have quite a few examples um Okay, well, we, okay, like something for set design, like we've been looking at flowers. There was a beautiful showcase in Dior where they had uh, roses all over for the, the separators and the walls of a, fa- of a runway. And in, we were like, oh, that's just such a beautiful design. How do we interpret that? And, what would, and so we just were like, oh, let's take local trees and just make walls out of the leaves. So... Yeah, and that's kind of where it's like, yeah, we didn't, it's not that, oh, we could have gotten those flowers, and we could have, roses are available, but we were like, no, let's put a tree that's, so we were like, let's get the Matoke tree leaves, because, you know, those are so culturally known, and they're beautiful, and so that, and now that already set us on like, okay, so then how are we going to place them, and, mm-hmm. and now that's already now our own thing, where, you know, I don't think the people in Dior would have thought about the Matoke leaves as as uh, dis, as uh, as separators or wall designs. So yeah, that's kind of a, an example. Awesome. Yeah. And and how many people do you have helping you organize the week? Um, in our team, we are seven. Yeah, seven heads of departments. Yeah, from uh, merchandise coordinator head videographer, head photographer, PR, creative director, set design, and myself, who just basically micromanages everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So. And, um, and who are the typical people who attend the Fashion Week? Um, 
it's been a mix like seeing from the first one to our second one i mean the audience grew different um but i mean it's what i love is what it's what i'm trying to also do which is sometimes also in our societies things are broken up from if you're you know in politics or if you're a student or if you are from this family or if you're from there or if you're this tribe if you're that and i want the Kampala Fashion Week environment to be for everyone, like to cut away all those kind of stereotypes that unfortunately society sometimes places on us as important. And it's not everyone, whoever anyone is, right now you're coming in a room to just breathe in an artistic moment that maybe also will travel with you to your home. Like that's the beauty about art, I think. It's, it allows you not only to be just in that moment, but to take that moment into your life for other things, whether it's you're going to buy the dress or... Even by seeing the Matoke leaves, you're like, hmm, that's a good design I want to put in my home. So we want to make the space very neutral and kind of eliminate any boxes. And so we want crowds from like all kinds. And luckily, from what I've seen in the last two years, it's kind of been that that sense. Um, and I mean, a few times we've had a little bit of like, oh, well, I'm so and so, so I should sit here, I should move there. And so we're trying to like eliminate, but those are, that's the process. But we want to make the space for everyone feeling comfortable, all sorts of ages, from the ones who want to study this, to people who just want to show up, to people who even just came to an event because they had nothing to do that Friday or Saturday, or whatever the audience is, we're open to it. But we know that when we bring you into our space, the point is always to transport you into this mind of the art. And uh, hopefully then that just does more for us. <laughs> there are more sponsors, more more audience members, more designers who want to be designers now because they thought, oh, I couldn't. And now they're like, oh my God, this platform exists. So if I become a designer, there's a place f- to push me further, you know? Um, because yeah, at the same time, we're, we are getting quite great media too. You know, that's the point. There's just so many aspects of what KFW does bring to also the media. Like last year, we were put on uh, CNN Inside Africa. So that kind of attention is also so wonderful to to be put on that on Uganda so that also it brings that kind of pride for that the future artists feel that they could they can do something here Absolutely. yeah so um you mentioned sponsors is that is that the main way that the whole thing yes it's is- an organization it's yeah. not a company um so yeah it's registered as an organization because also again that's something that i felt was very more af- like a lot of fashion weeks are companies actually um but we don't have that ability to be a company managing that we need we need people to support we still need people to be interested to support the arts and then prove to them that by supporting the arts there's like a benefit and there's a growth. So yeah, that's why we're in that kind of structure again. It's more made for being here. So, so, yeah. um, is, so, so just on it, so London Fashion Week mm-hmm. is, a, com- is, a, is a for-profit company? I don't think it's a for-profit company. I think it's also an organization. It's like a half-half. I think they're, okay. they're both ways because they also do get funding to good, give scholarships to okay. designers and help new coming designers. So they're, yeah, they're half-half. But for us, we're organization so it is, is the view to eventually become a company or um i don't i mean to be honest i think because of this just the way that the system is in uganda i think it's better to stay as an organization and we just have to be smart in the organization how we run it mm-hmm. which i think is a easier way um yeah to, i think for us do you mean um being in uganda it's better to be an organization what do you um because being a private company, first you need that kind of equity and that kind of money. And first of all, that where is that money going to be coming from? <laughs> and knowing that it is an art, you also know that you're spending money more than making it. But through spending it, you're pushing other things to make money. So that's how as an organization, whereas a company, it, you also still have to always think of your profit. Um, where uh, being an organization here, Meaning that also I think at the same time sometimes businesses come and go because lack of funding and people get in trouble because they're borrowing here and taking there and I wanted to eliminate any of those things to the point that even if KFW doesn't happen next year and people are like why it's like oh we didn't get funding and that's the way it is you know and and I think it's also a very healthy way to show people how business runs uh, especially sometimes here in Uganda because it can be up and down. Um, 
there's not a lot of sometimes certainty on so many things, um, especially anything that does involve the arts. Um, so yeah, we have to show what the re- realities are. So yeah. Who who are your sponsors? Uh, right now we have uh, U.S. Embassy, U.S. Mission. Uh, we have Uganda Waraji. Uh, you know why Jews use our local brewer, <laughs> local <laughs> local brew. Yeah. Um, they're amazing. Uh, then we also have LDJ Silk Events, um, Safe Buddha. We have holy. We have some vendors, food vendors that are involved from Holy Crep to Ujo, uh, Wava Water. Um, are these local businesses? Yes, these are. So it's a lot of local businesses that, and also again, that now pushes that of local businessing businesses seeing because I mean every business art is part of it from their logos to their setups to their websites, you know, and um, so this is also important to show that these businesses can see the clientele in the arts and how arts are important in their own business through you know association um, and. I love networking. I think networking is also a form of, of, of development and payment. So I also bring that element in how KFW is run, that, that we are so efficient that we, cre- we are not someone who harbor or hold our, our connections. We want to share them because through sharing, it actually can uh, push more support, I believe. Um, so yeah, uh, th- these uh, I think our sponsors see that right now. So, but yeah, it's still we still have little sponsors at the moment, but they're yeah, it's. Uh, I mean the the American embassy sounds like a I wouldn't have guessed you'd have had the U.S. embassy. Yeah, I mean they do have a department and they understand the importance of um, craft and cust and service uh, service industry. So I think definitely they understood the business side that I'm trying to push and they see how this um, this sector is very important in, in creating very a lot of job opportunities in the future. I mean, the world fashion industry is, is valued at like almost $1 billion um, in how it is. So I think they could see that in wanting to support us. Um, there, there, were, there was a level, of course, that they could support because they had very, various projects going on. But it was just good that they, getting behind us, emphasized that importance yeah. that this could is a very important business sector as so, well. Yeah. So, yeah, um, out of interest, um, what types of employment have been created or have been promoted mm-hmm. as a result of Kampala Fashion Week? Um, well, definitely, I think. Like, for again, I'm going to use set design, like my set designer is an architect, and so, but she's also into interior design, and now she's doing a set design for a runway and, uh, and a fashion space. So that has created another area that she's like, oh, I didn't think I would be going into this for this particular, but now that's a job. Um, also... We have a creative director, which is just having that freedom. That's a position that people are like, what is a creative director? Which is very important. Um, um, but people don't give those jobs. But it's that person that kind of really sets everything up and knows how it flows visually. As much as everyone knows how things flow, with, oh, what we're paying and budgeting, etc. End of the day, how does an event move and work and match each other? That when you do walk into spaces and you're like, oh my gosh, and taken it back and it moves you, all of that was very important, but you needed the person behind it. And that's a person who understands architecture, design, visuals, sound, smell, taste. So that's also a job now that's been created for my, who actually is also a designer. Our head of create, our creative director is actually a women's wear designer for a brand called Catherine & Sons. Uh, he's Ugandan, and then I saw what he could do because we worked together on styling and stuff, and I just saw he had these abilities. And so now that job has been created. Uh, merchandise, we've had a lot of people learning how to like uh, take care of clothes, how to fix clothes, little seamstressing jobs, because when you have a lot of designers bring in clothing, you need to fix sometimes. or So it's improved our tailoring, because I kind of, in, also with my studio, it connects. Um, I bring young girls who want to do internships and I train them further 
into from my training so that well by the time they leave my studio they're in they know italian to japanese pattern cutting and and tailoring um and then that gives them an ability to maybe start their own because i'm also very open where i'm like you could work for me but you can also be tailoring on your own as long as of course you're not copying my designs or anything and we're, we're a little bit understood on that it's fine but but helping them also create businesses for themselves because now they're trained at a level that either they can even start sewing curtains if they want, but now it will be quality that will then increase the price range. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of different jobs that, um, for, you know, up to the cleaning, you know, just, every, yeah, there's just so many. Yeah. I don't even know where to, to keep going from. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. um, I'm interested, what is the difference between Italian and Japanese? Um, the, the, the finish, the sizing of um, the patterns, like how the patterns sit and, and the, 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 the framing on the body, um, sometimes uh, stitching techniques are a bit different, like some places use a double stitch or a less or a light stitch or a separate stitch. Or, so yeah, that's, those are like the little differences of Japanese um, to Italian tailoring but they're of the highest level of quality and preciseness on their finishing and things so that's why i've always been very interested to learn both of those and so in a sort of global perspective is it basically italian and japanese or are there sort of like australian or do you know what i mean i mean i think in every country there must be like history on their tailoring but i feel like the japanese and the italians have a, a a longer history on the craft of tailoring, um, so I think that's why they're maybe well known, more well known. But I, I mean, I yeah, maybe other countries are also like you, you couldn't come to Uganda and say uh, Ugandan pattern. We haven't had centuries of uh, this craft being so important that the techniques and all these names were invented. You know, we, we're not there. We're actually we have to take from the other crafts that have been all around longer. So I think it's maybe more on how long they've been around. That's why Italian, Japanese, tailoring at are, are quite a high um, level. And French, of course, yeah. At a um, sort of high level, like which uh, would you say there is um, sort of Ugand Ugandan design? Is that most similar to which other type of um, type of design? I don't think we yet have a Ugandan design. Yeah, I don't think so. Even when people are like, oh, but our traditional wear. And I'm like, well, that depends. It depends the tribe, and then it depends the story, because everybody's uh, story and tribal discovery of their, their garments are different. Like the Busuti, like I'm a Muganda from the Baganda tribe, and like the Busuti was invented by a British white woman. What's it? The Busuti is yeah. our traditional wear for the woman. Okay. Yeah, as the kanzu is for the men. But the, the history behind the Busuti, not the kanzu, but the Busuti is that it was invented by a British white woman during the colonial times who saw us without clothes and was like, oh, that's indecent, so she dressed them. And so the Busuti is not technically designed by a Ugandan, it's designed by a British woman. So, uh, But then other tribals within Uganda, no, they're, they stem from that tribe and not a foreigner so you, you yeah so we don't really yeah we don't even I think have a specific style I think yeah I think we're growing we're starting that's this is what yeah. this is now yeah and soon maybe in a couple of centuries before I'm gone when I'm even gone people will be like this is the East African style I don't even want to just say Ugandan maybe East Africa will have adopted a way that we stitch because now tailoring is becoming such a big deal, just Tanzania now, how they're stopping secondhand clothing, and uh, the guy, that, the president in Tanzania is stopping secondhand clothing, but in, by cutting off the secondhand clothes that are infiltrating all of Africa. Um, and a lot of countries are talking about it, even us have been talking about banning secondhand clothing, which I think is not really realistic. You just have to manage it, but that's also uh, difficult. But Tanzania is banning it. He is enforcing and giving back by training the youth in tailoring. So it's, when you say banning secondhand clothes, is in no more secondhand In Tanzania, apparently, yes. That, well, that was passed. That's what the president was saying. But he's giving back, and now articles are showing he's giving back by training the youth in tailoring so that they will become the producers of clothing. So I think he's foreseeing what to do. But see, that's Tanzania. 
separately doing that. We're still not there. We've been in talks, but I don't know what's happened. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what's the so I suppose put it um. If I'm a designer, um, what is the benefit of me um, showcasing at Kampala Fashion Week? Mm-hmm. I think if you're a designer and you have like established your studio in whichever form, but you have a functioning studio and you have a good clientele that you feel comfortable with what you're doing, then it is definitely another platform to take you to another level. I mean, other designers who have showcased with us said that they got offers to go and showcase in other runways after they were seen or someone followed them on KFW. So it's a very just, I think it's a strong exposure platform. That's what I would say first. And of course, my second would wish that everyone takes away the creativity and develops and wants the, and pushes their boundaries of their minds. Yes, that's my second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, when, so they get more exposure, so they go on another, another runway. Um, yes, and or just get clients. Okay. Or um, who who are the clients of these? International, I can go. I mean, for me, even just because I do showcase at KFW as well, I have two like hats at the same time. But um, I got more online offers because people saw my stuff online. Because after KFW, again, we have a very strong media relationship, so we go on like so many amazing blogs from Europe up to America to Australia. Write stuff for about us and. And a brand or a company or a client sees you. And are these typically individual people, or are they um, other sort of? Um... I mean, I think it's varied. Like you get individual customers, and then I mean, for me, I got online stores. So um, yeah, and then for other designers, I think they've gone online stores. So yeah, it's it's a mix of more personal orders as well as companies but then again it's up to you of your brand what you do with that because you you know me i'm more on just doing company big orders than than tailoring personal i do i do that very little bit here and there but other companies they are excited about more customers to tailor for so yeah and your business can be any way that's also what we say about again like about kfw you don't have to be oh we're a wholesale brand or we are this retail only it's like if you are even um, like my aunts actually are going to showcase they've had their company for 30 years they've been a tailoring company in uganda one of the first um and yeah they're they tailor they don't want to be on chops they don't want to but they get more clients yeah that's kind of yeah so we'll just do a few more questions that's all right um so if you were to sort of fast forward three years five years what would kampala fashion week look like uh, um, I mean, I just hope more support so that it can push our ideas because uh, Kampala Fashion Week is under the Ugandan uh, Fashion Council, which I'm chairman of. So, and the Ugandan Fashion Council is supposed to be a collection of artists who have been doing quite well. They have a good, strong network so that we can give back to you know the ones before because I am here because of so much support of people giving me an opportunity for people taking chances on me for people pushing my brand when I was so young um, so I know the importance of that and I was fortunate enough that I was in kind of international settings that there were people with certain really strong positions that could push me that then led to me being where I am now and I just think it should def- this kind of system has to be local in every country. And so that we can also communicate back and forth. Like I want to communicate with the Kenyan Fashion Council. I want to communicate with the Nigeria so that we can, because it's not about just being in Uganda. It's about pushing around this continent. So um, I'm hoping that's, that's uh, like right now we have a Ghanaian designer coming in. And last year we also had a couple of desi- we had a, a designers from Sudan and Rwanda. And that's also what KFW, is. I want it to be the hub that every fashion show should take on everywhere that we all are allowed to go to each other and that it creates businesses. Um, I even partner with this boutique here called Bold Kampala so that when I get designers from other countries, I'm like, and again, you have an opportunity as you come and do this platform. I connect you to Bold Kampala so that if you're interested to stock your stuff in Kampala, you you have an outlet, 
you know so yeah so it's creating all these abilities that just push all of us we all have to work together to make our ban our businesses run i think i don't believe in separation and it, that means that's when you start doing really tricky things to make more money but you could do that if you just worked with people and collaborated and pushed each other's um you know companies you know if i make if you make like i last year even i worked with um every, each collection this year i'm doing it separately but i worked with a accessories company called zana and she does music bags and shoes and people are like oh but you're going to work to and I'm like yeah why not she does accessories and bags and i do my clothes they're like but what if you don't mesh and i'm like that is the whole point of creativity she, if i trust what she's doing somehow our work will work together and that's how it is zana doesn't tell me what to do it's run by this wonderful lady called linda luanga um but and she doesn't tell and i don't tell her what to do but because her work is amazing and my works it's somehow matched so perfectly that our collections look great together and see that already saves me finding a shoe person paying for that so it's also about finding ways to m- manage your money and this is what i also want the conversation to be i want us to be very open people sometimes feel very uncomfortable talking about money and and what they're spending and oh i don't have this to make this and i'm like that's rubbish you know there's always a way to find especially as an artist we know how to figure out ways to make something out of nothing that is our job so why not do that with everything you know especially and just be honest about it you know we don't have this we don't have okay what's the solution making minds work that's also important some people get so stuck on the outcome is a finance and that's not it it's the journey you know so that you're not just only thinking about money because what is money after that it's my importance is what it does that's what i'm in, i'm interested in what does money do what does it create what does it push people to 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 yeah to develop into so yeah that's what I, we're hoping kfw it's just as i said again it's so many layers to what it really is um i don't know if i'm just <laughs> explaining it at its best but yeah it's more than just a place to just see clothes and and that have a nice champagne drink and 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 go and gossip that's not what Kampala fashion week it's it's a place to start conversation and and questions about cuz art shows depicts your society it depicts what's going on it depicts it's 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 asking the hard and uncomfortable questions are we happy with who we are as a society is this what we want to be do we want to be this box that box are we free to be free why not be even more than what we say is supposed to let's not replicate our following countries let's try to be ourselves and then see where that goes so that's what i'm very much also hoping as much as it's all about designers displaying i hope it's also a space that pushes people to question their own identity and what they're doing yeah and and, uh, and how can people listening at home follow what's going on with the Kampala fashion week? well we have wonderful social media uh, so, uh, you know links uh, we're on facebook we're on instagram twitter tumblr we have a website and it's all very easy it's just kampala fashion week it's beautiful cool. and I'll, I'll link to that in the in the show notes as well cool so glory thank you so much thank that was you uh, super so interesting much. <laughs> Before we head, just a quick moment to say thank you for listening. You can see the show notes of this episode by heading to samfloy.com forward slash podcast. That's S-A-M-F-L-O-Y dot com forward slash podcast. Now, this show is still relatively new, and so I really appreciate you making it through to the end. What would be great is, if you're enjoying it, to tell a couple of friends about it too, in case they'd also be interested in listening. Also, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please feel free to email me, podcast at samfloy.com. I'd be happy to chat. In any case, have a great week and speak to you soon.